All right, welcome back to the special edition One Bar in Lapagus show. It is mid-season. That means one thing and one thing only. It is time to hand out some hardware. It is time to hand out the Vikings mid-season awards. Hell yeah, we got the orchestra here ready to play when we hand these things out. Um, a lot of awards to be given out. Uh, some good, some bad, some just for our own sick pleasure. Um, but yeah, uh, why not? Let's just get started. I'm excited. I want to I handle some damn awards. Yeah, let's uh, let's give a little little bit of a preview here. We got we got biggest turd, obviously stud, surprise, breakout player, all sorts of ones. But let's 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 get into it. And Lupagus and I have not shared any answers, so if every single answer is exactly the same, we apologize. But that's just the way it is. That's the way love goes. We haven't shared any answers, but we have shared a bed. We have we have mel- many of time, many of bed. All right, let's get into this. Let's start off with kind of an easy one. Let's start off with the Vikings midseason rookie of the year. Yeah, um, you know, in recent weeks, some guys have been gaining ground, but right now, hands down, no doubt about it, it's Justin Jefferson, wide receiver. Uh, what's he got, like 36 catches, over 500, some receiving there, or 380, I don't know what it is. Three touchdowns, the guy's a beast. Um, you know, he's he isn't just a one-trick pony, which is what I love about him. He can, you know, he can run like the slant routes. He can make catches when he's blanketed by a, rec- by a corner. He's got great speed, and he's just so much damn fun. I mean, this guy brings so much positive energy to the Vikings sidelines, to the team. Um, he is going to be the Vikings' future number number one receiver, and to know you have that on your roster right now is huge, in addition to the production you're getting this year already. But is he already the Vikings' number one receiver? Ayo! Uh, yeah, he's got he's got 34 receptions, 627 yards, three touchdowns, ripping shit up. There isn't anyone even close to catching him on this one. He the he could end those end the year with those stats. He'll probably get it. So yes, Justin Jefferson is our rookie of the year so far. Let's let's do another couple of easy ones here. Offensive player of the year for the Vikings. You want to go first? It doesn't matter who goes for because it's Delvin Cook. Um, no doubt about it. He is the Vikings offense right now. He's the reason they even have a tiny little sliver of a pube of hope left to make the playoffs. It's Delvin Cook. And if they're going to keep making that pube grow into a bush, they're going to continue to feed Delvin Cook. It's true. Everything you said is just true. And he's not only off midseason Vikings offensive player of the year, he's probably the midseason NFL offensive player of the year. So Easy peasy. He's uh, he's 142 yards away from a thousand yards already. Already got 12 scores. Dalvin Cook, easy. And, Next, uh, this one he missed a game. Be... He's missed a game. Let's not forget that he's missed a game. He has. He's missed a game. It's crazy. Uh, this one defensive player of the year for the Vikings midseason. I'm assuming we'll be the same here, but uh, no guarantees. I'm going Eric Kendricks. Just what this guy does um, every single week. He's usually getting double digit tackles. You see him. Doesn't matter what sideline it's on. He's he's there making a tackle. He can be twenty yards down the field covering a wide receiver, and most chances is that he's going to actually break up that pass. He's so good in coverage. Uh, he's really become the heart and soul of the Minnesota Vikings defense, especially with Daniel Hunter out, uh, Everson Griffin gone. Eric Kendricks is so damn good, and I still don't think he gets half the love he deserves league wide. Yep, it's Kendricks. Easy peasy. Could you imagine this defense without him? I mean, our defense is going through quite the transition as it is, but. He he keeps he keeps his defense together. He makes it from being awful to being tolerable. So Eric Kendricks will easily go down in Vikings history as one of the best linebackers ever to play for the Vikings. No doubt. Hell yeah. All no right, doubt. What do you got? Some, I think we're getting some interesting ones here. Let's go uh breakout player. Um who is your midseason 2020 Minnesota Vikings breakout player of the year? Breakout player, man. He has arrived. He is here. Oh, it is Garrett Bradbury. A little bit of a rocky, rocky rookie year, but I think I think he is uh, more than played up to his his draft uh, position. He is a very, very, very good run blocking center. Getting a little bit better in the pass blocking, but I, I think he is. Uh, I think he is officially broken out. Yeah, it, it took him a little bit longer to get there than most figured. When you take a center at pick 18, you want him to come in and just be a dominating presence from the start. Uh, Bradbury showed flashes last year, but he was very much up and down this year. He's been very steady. He's been very damn good. So I also had Garrett Bradbury winning this one bar and Luffy Award. Yeah, he's got he's got one penalty, giving up zero sacks. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. That was nice. All right. 
What do you got next? Let you do it. Fire away. All right, I'll go ahead. Let's go disappointing player of the year. Uh, there's quite a few. Um, who there, are you taking? There are quite a few, and uh, unfortunately, there are quite a few. I wish there was. I wish this was hard, but it's not. I'm going with BC Johnson. BC Johnson, the guy who broke out last year unexpectedly, had some high expectations. Not high expectations. I would say coming in as a number three, but BC Johnson has five receptions. Five receptions for 93 yards. Um, not great. I mean, Alexander Madison has more catches than him. He's been a ghost out there. He's been non-existent, so he is absolutely my disappointing player. Well, I mean, yeah, some of that's on Beastie. Some of that's also on the way the play calling's going, just the way Kirk Cousins has been distributing the football. He, he likes he likes Adam Thielen, and he likes Justin Jefferson. He doesn't really look too many other spots, so um, I think it's a little bit of both. But, yeah, he's he's been very, very disappointing. My guy, though, is a guy who has been playing. He's been out there every single week. Uh, getting lots of snaps on defense, but not doing a whole hell of a lot with those snaps is Afidi Adenabo. Uh, last year, he had seven sacks breakout. He was supposed to come in and be opposite Daniel Hunter and really uh, with the increased amount of snaps, many thought he would be a double digit sack guy. Uh, well, halfway through the season, he's got two and a half sacks, 22 tackles, and just not not making the plays he did a season ago. I don't know what it is, if he's just not built to go, you know, full four rounds or what. Um, maybe he's better suited as a situational pass guy, and the Vikings need to find uh, a new edge rusher in the draft early next year and put him back to that role. Because right now, Fidio Denebo has been very disappointing. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the sack numbers, it's disappointing. I'm starting to warm up to him a little bit. I mean, he's he's been, played pretty well against the run. So I'm not as down on Odenabo. Yes, I wish he had a lot more sacks, though. All right, let's go to moment of the year. Let's mix it up a little bit. The moment of the year so far. What do you got? We probably have the exact same one. No, actually, well, you go first. There's two ways I can go here. And, you know, the moment of the year is kind of every Viking season, you go back and think there's always that one defining image. And that's kind of what I thought of when I was thinking of this category. Like right now, if you were to pick one defining image of the Vikings 2020 season, what would it be? Uh, And I kind of had two, but I want to see what you do. Uh, this one's easy. Through. This is DJ Wanham making Aaron Rodgers look just silly. Silly ending that Packers game. Aaron Rodgers having the ball, trying to come back uh, in the fourth quarter with about a minute left. Usually does not pan out well. And DJ Wanham and that image of Aaron Rodgers just full on getting railed was beautiful. Yeah. Um, it's the first time I'd ever think an image of Aaron Rodgers getting railed would be beautiful, but it was. was. Um, that was my number one also, but if you were going to go uh, that way, I was going to go with this one, and that's uh, Justin Jefferson doing the gritty. Um, you know, he did it, like, on the 10-yard line, <laughs> and he just danced his way into the end zone. And, you know, it's kind of taking the NFL by storm. Everybody's doing the gritty now. Uh, even the fat linemen are doing it. Um, again, that was his breakout moment. That was his uh, really defining moment of his young career so far. And to me, that's a close second in this category. Just him doing that. You, you can, there's so many pictures of him, you know, just, just outside the end zone doing that. Um, it, that was kind of his, his moment of arrival. And that's definitely one image that I'll always remember about the 2020 Vikings. Yeah, but it also brought on a moment where Adam Thielen tried to do it. And that was like the worst image of 2020 so far. Well, let's hope Kirk Cousins doesn't try. I hope he does. I bet, you know what? I think you'd nail it. He would nail it. All right, let's go to... Biggest surprise of the year for the Vikings midseason. Biggest surprise. Yeah, mine's just their start. Uh, who would have thought this team was going to go 0-4 uh, to start the season? Or was it 0-3? 0-3? I don't remember. What were we? Bad. It was, yeah, whatever. It was the 0-3, for 0-4 for start, whatever it was. Uh, no one really saw this coming. I think worst case, you know, maybe 2-2 two and two start. Um, <clears throat> it just and Not even that they started out losing those games, but the, the first couple, they weren't even competitive. Uh, it was very, very gross. Uh, it was just like they didn't even want to play. So to me, just the way this season started for the Vikings was the biggest surprise. Yeah, my biggest surprise, I'm going with a player. I'm going with Riley Reef. What the hell? I mean, this is a guy they almost cut bait with trying to restructure, and he's having probably his best season of his career this year. Zero sacks, one penalty. Pass blocking has just been fantastic. Uh, we were – this close from letting him go. And I couldn't imagine this offensive line without him. Anything bad I said about Riley Reef leading into the season, I just take it all back. I'm a fool. This guy is, he's, he's one of the best left tackles in, in the NFC right now. 
yeah, he's been damn good. And then you, you said it, it was a huge surprise. He was almost cut. Um, and even when he was playing good, there's still rumors of him being traded, but no way in hell. Vikings are hanging on to this guy. Yeah, what would they do? I don't know. Maybe Ezra Cleveland would be as good a guard as he is at left tackle. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, we would probably be 0-8 right now. Ah! All right, let's see. Best chance to break out in the second half of the season. Which Viking is going to bust a nut and just put themselves on the map? Uh, this might be a surprise one with who I'm going with here, but the way the Vikings cornerback group is going with these injuries that keep happening, uh, I'm going to say Chris Boyd, if he continues to get chances, uh, he actually looked pretty damn good out there last week against the Lions. I know it's the Lions, but, um, I liked the way he was progressing late in the season last year. He kind of took a backseat to some of the young guys coming in this year, but now he's getting a shot. And, uh, if he continues to play every week, I think he could be a hell of a corner down the road. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Chris Boyd. Everybody's pulling for Chris Boyd. I'm sticking with the cornerbacks. I'm going with the rookie, and this guy just seems to get better every damn week. I'm going with Jeff Gladney. Um, he's going to be out there. I mean, the best part about this year, whether or not we we go anywhere, is these young guys are getting a lot of action, and they're getting better. <clears throat> so Jeff Gladney, playing well against the run. Yes, he needs to be better. Yes, he looks like a rookie at times, but I think he will absolutely get better in these last eight games. Yeah, I actually kind of thought he's already had a bit of a breakout, so I, uh, that's why I didn't consider him on my list. I'm a little deeper. All right, so let's let's go, uh, let's go on the other side of the coin. Can. Which uh, which player might it be time to maybe give up on award? This is a hell of a award that they will hang in their on their mantle. Who should we maybe give up on? Yeah, I think they have to. I hate to say this, but it's it's Mike Hughes. I'm sticking with the corners. Um, this guy, he's just proven he he's not dependable. He he's never out there. He's always hurt. Uh, and, and what's worrisome now about him is he's two neck injuries in a row. Uh, I, I wonder if he's one of these guys who's just going to call it a career and, and worry about his, you know, put his health first and not even come back. It might be his choice, but um, if it's not the Vikings, if he does come back next year, he's got to compete for a job. Um, you got Jeff Gladney, Cam Dantzler getting tons of playing time this year. They're probably going to be your number one and two corners next year. And Mike Hughes should not be handed anything. If he does come back, he has to earn his spot on this team because right now he just hasn't done it. Yeah, three seasons, seven games started. Poor guy. I mean, I, I think it has a lot to do with those injuries, no doubt about it. But some people are just unlucky. Um, I agree. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with another corner. I'm gonna go with I'm going with Holton Hill. Um, he's only played four games this year. Started two of them, but this was kind of the year. He was kind of the the, the vet out of all these youngsters um, to maybe maybe make a splash. And those four games he was out there, he looked like uh, he looked like poop. He looked like poop. poop. He didn't look good. Uh, high hopes for him. It was great. The fact that we brought him in and might have found a gem, but man, I, I expected a lot more out of him in, in this early season. And with these young guys, like you said, it same thing with Hughes. Might be time. Yeah, I, I, I think it is. And we'll see what happens, see what they bring in in the offseason. But um, yeah, it's not looking good. Even got a factor in Harrison Hand. I mean, he's played well when he's been out there. And you got four young corners who are promising. So uh, these two crusty veterans uh the Vikings might just need to be uh shown the door they're crusty yet they're still very very young <laughs> we got a young developing crust on them mm. all right we got a couple more we got uh we're gonna finish with stud and third of the year but before we get into that one final one the player I really wish I would see more on the field award oh, oh yeah there it is uh I was wondering if they were throwing their fast one at me here uh, I'm going to go with Ole Udo. I, I liked what I saw with this guy late in the year last year. He's very aggressive against the Bears. Uh, Dakota Dozier is still kind of meh, a left guard. Uh, why not try Udo out there, see what he's got, see what he can bring to the table. Maybe he's better, maybe he's not. But um, definitely a player I was thinking we would see more of this year, and we haven't. And I, I do want to see him out there just to get an idea of, of what Ole Udo is. I, I also love Ole Udo. One thing I have learned – is uh, to kind of trust the Vikings <laughs> regarding the offensive line they put out there because we wanted Drew Simeon out there and thought they were so dumb. They put him in. We look like fools. But, yes, Ole Udo is a good one. I'm, I'm sticking with my ginger brother, uh, James James Lynch. want to see more of him. Why not? He's got uh, – he, he'll probably be inactive seven of the next eight games, but I can hope. And I, I have a special connection with him because we were both fairly see-through. Auburn hair. Yeah. Um... I don't know why I felt the same way about him after this first game. And then he, he did see a little bit more and nothing happened. So, um, eh, whatever. 
All right, let's uh, finish off with stud and turd of the year midseason. Let's start with turd so we end on a good note. Who is your stud? This will be easy. Do we even have to say it? Wait, wait. you said we're ending with turd or we're starting with turd? We're starting with turd. Well, That'll be yeah. easy is what I meant. Well, I think it's easy because I, this guy I picked is definitely the worst Vikings player I've seen this year. It's not even close. Uh, he made – Recently cut Pat Elfine looked like a pro bowler. It's Drew Samia. Uh, I don't know in all my days of watching football that I've ever seen a guard play so bad. Uh, Drew Samia was just horrible, collecting penalties like they were 1987 Fleer cards. Um, just not good, especially in pass protection. He was getting just pushed into the quarterback every other snap. Uh, horrible technique. Uh, I don't know what the Vikings saw in this guy to make him a fourth round pick. And, and I we think he might be the way Willie Beaver next year and not even round. be on the team. All right. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm giving Drew Samia a pass just because he was just kind of, th- he was a backup. I mean, he threw him in there. So I, I kind of feel bad for the guy at this point. You know, I'm going, uh, I'm going with the guy that makes a shit ton of money that is not living up to it. And that's Kirk Cousins. This is the easiest one probably out of the bunch for me. When you're paying this guy $30 million and you're turning him into a game manager, there are some serious issues there. Uh, you know, his stats, when you look at the interceptions, yes, he just, some of those were just Hail Marys at the end, but Kirk Cousins, I, I was his biggest fan. I would, I would give that guy so much love, but it's, it's not happening through these first eight games. So he is my absolute turd. Yeah. He doesn't have to be as he doesn't have to. We don't have to ride him. We got Delvin Cook, so you don't I know, have but to. If uh, you're paying somebody a quarterback thirty million dollars to be a game, it is hand the ball off. It's probably about average now great. in the NFL, huh? It's probably about average now in the NFL. No, it's not. He's he's on the upper mm-hmm. side. Yeah, but you don't you don't need him to do that right now. So don't force it. Exactly. Then don't pay somebody thirty million dollars to do it. You're gonna end up having Sean Manning as your quarterback if you don't matured. sell that kind of money. He's matured. Uh, all right, let's end on a good note. Stud of the year, stud of the year, Dalvin Cook, yeah. both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know there's there's no doubt about it. This guy is just so damn good. He's probably right now the best player in the NFL. Uh, Pat Mahomes might have something to say about that, but Dalvin Cook is right there. He's so good. He can just do so much. Um, and just the way he does it with power, with speed, with vision, with burst, with just wiggling through a tiny little crease and then turn on the Jets. He's a game changer. And let's just hope to God he stays healthy the rest of the year because I want to see what this guy's final numbers are because they are going to be pants droppingly good. It will be. It will be huge. Yes, Delvin Cook, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That is our midseason awards. Let us know down in the comments where we stepped on our dick, who you think might be different, who's your stud or turd of the year. Mm-hmm. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, you're not going to love to hear this. Squeezing a man's testicles can kill him due to the release of too much adrenaline.